<laughs> I've done some crazy shit. Like, what's a crazy shit thing you did? Um, when my ex fiance wanted this like limited edition teddy bear that he gave me, which first of all, ew. Um, it was very expensive. I will say he wanted it back and he was using it as a reason to just like contact me. Mm. And so he lived um, in a different state. So I, I mailed it back to him, but I mailed it to him one limb at a time. So like first he got an <laughs> arm, then he got a leg, then he got the body. <laughs> and it was like a $300 teddy bear. Um, I mean, I was also 18 and engaged. So, you know, I feel like it's fine it's been a decade <laughs> this is, i can talk about it now this is I the craziest admit. thing i've ever heard however since i know the <laughs> gist of the story with the engagement man uh i say it is justified but uh that is wow What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Shooters Got a Shoe. I am your host, Erica Spira, and today I have a great guest for you guys this week, as always. Uh, but before we get to our guest, real quick, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. You're already here. All right, you're already having a good time. Just hit the button, okay? Or if you're listening to us and you want to watch us, go to our YouTube page. Just search Shooters Got a Shoe Pod, and you will find us. Or the link is in the description for you. Uh, a few things we got to plug up top. We have our Patreon-only live show, which is virtual. So you just got to join the Patreon to be a part of it. It's next Monday, the 17th. Uh, So join us there, patreon.com slash shooters. Gotta shoot, all right? We have a $3 tier. You can join that tier if you just want to come and watch. Uh, But the Patreon's 5 bucks a month. If you want an extra episode, you want us to answer your questions, we're going to have guests, live Q&A. It's where all the juicy gossip is. So join us there, patreon.com slash shooters. Gotta shoot. Uh, and I think that's all I got for plugs for this week. So hit it, Fonzie. All right. My guest this week uh, is one of my homies. If you're on the Patreon, you've definitely heard me talk about her. Uh, I'm very excited she's here. Everybody, please put your hands together for Stephanie Andrew. She's trying to get me to join the Patreon <laughs> so bad. I'm like, what's she saying? What's she <laughs> yeah, saying? That's my new plan of the show. I just have guests on. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm talking about you. You want to give me five dollars? Come join. Absolutely, take my money. But yeah, welcome, welcome Hi. to the show officially. Yes. Um, I wanted to have you on just because you've lived a life. That is, I am here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie has been through uh, I several have been different things. Through it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm like, I don't know which one to start with because uh, before we turned everything on, you were like, oh yeah, that one thing you said you wanted to talk about. I had to send an email to my therapist first. Yes. I was like, okay. It was well, like, do you have time to meet immediately? <laughs> meet? Oh, you had to meet with her? No, I feel bad. It, no, 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 no. I'm joking. It oh, was, okay. I mean, I'm not joking, but like we can discuss it. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. You sure? <laughs> yes. Listen, it's not a gotcha show. No. No, no, I'm an open book. Okay. All right. Yeah. We were one of my homies. And I was like, oh, you know, I like having people on the show that I just like story. talking to and having fun. But we could we could we start something else to okay. warm you up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we have to ease into the trauma. <laughs> ease in. Well, first of all, if the Patreon uh, people are listening right now or watching, uh, you were with me. We went to a fireman mm-hmm. mixer, which I yes. recapped more fully on the Patreon. But uh fireman mixer has been successful in your favor. Yeah, so I went into this planning to pay $35 to roast a bunch of like hot grown men because I was so pessimistic (laughs) about (laughs) meeting someone that I can even tolerate. And then I did exactly that. So um, it's going. It's the first time I've been kind of like seeing someone to any degree in three years. So that's a long time. And yeah, it's cool. I mean, he's a firefighter. He's hot. (laughs) <laughs> so he's got that that's, going for him that's the only description we're gonna get <laughs> that's all you he's get a firefighter well i hot. can't tell you his name because i have this whole plan to soft launch him on my instagram so okay this, and i'm not gonna hurt launch him until our wedding <laughs> this is what we've debated before you're like i love a soft launch i, I love don't. a soft launch because i believe that when people don't know about your life they can't fuck with it so oh that's from a different that's from a different thing yeah. But I think the soft launch is like giving the man a little leeway to still fuck around and do both. what he wants. My reason. That's why I don't like it. Oh no! Oh, I get that. No, I wouldn't be with someone who wants to do what he wants. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the soft launch won't be problematic. Okay. Because if he does what he wants, then he's going to be very single. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Be well. <laughs> but that's but that's why I'm saying the hard launch to me. I think gets rid of that. Where it's like. <clears throat> 
the reaction to it or I mean, you're, you're my friend that we do the constant TikToks back and forth. And I remember I sent you the one that was like the picture theory of like you're on a date. Yeah. And if you take a picture while on the date of them or the two of you together and Which see how they did. react. Which we did. I don't remember the theory. What happens? Well, this girl was like, oh, I've done this and reached around whatever number date. And she was like, oh, the guys that I ended up dating were not at all weirded out by it or like where are you going to post that? Where Where's that going? Who are oh, you sending yeah. that to? Like, none of that. If anything, she was like, oh, then they'd be like, okay. And then sometimes they'd <clears throat> take pics of me or they would like gladly hop in. Yeah. Whereas other people would be very skeptical of kind of like, hey, where's that going? And like, I've had someone, you know, their arm was in a photo. This is before soft launch was invented. It was purely accident. I was taking a picture of my food. He got in there and he was weird about it when I put it on my Instagram story. I'm like, you're not tagged. Are you afraid someone's gonna identify you by your arm hair? That's what <laughs> like, I said, what? like, no, it's a sleeve, <laughs> it clothes on. I'm like, I don't. Odd, um, yeah, I don't trust those people. Right, We like, took a picture. lesson learned. Yeah, we went to, yeah, Red Flag Run. We went to the Gustav Klimt um, immersive exhibit for our first date, and there was a selfie room, and he's like, oh, we should go in there. So we took a selfie. Um, so and he was cool about it. I mean, I didn't post it anywhere again because. But soft that's. Launch. But the thing is, yeah. <laughs> but he was like cool about it, and then I'm thinking about the time that I was in a relationship for like four and a half years, and I have two pictures of him because he, like, <laughs> he actually hated me <laughs> and did not want me to be happy ever. So that proves so, the theory. That proves the theory. It proves the fucking theory. The yeah, theory. yeah. Uh, if your man hates taking photos with you. Uh... He also cheated, so confirmed. <laughs> confirmed, my dude. Uh, that is how you can uh... weed out the bad ones. Will he take a photo with you? Um, but yeah, so he's super cool, and he's like been planning really dope dates, and he's very communicative, mm-hmm. and I'm an anxious bitch, so we love a secure partner. He's like, yeah. before I can even be anxious about something, he like reassures me, and I'm like, who are you, and what is your flaw? Well, well, technically, <laughs> anxious, anxious bitches love avoidant partners. Oh, 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 wrongfully. don't even get me started. It wrongfully. took men, many years, like I said, three years of therapy to be like ready to like trust my intuition and trust that I'm not going to go for an avoidant person because Mm -hmm. almost every guy that I've dated historically has actively told me I will never date you and then I was like challenge accepted four (laughs) years later bitch we live together (laughs) I I mean I personally almost feel like uh, maybe it's not true for everyone but for me I almost feel like I I have just run out of energy to be like chasing someone in that, yeah, I won't do it. Matter, I won't do it. Like I very quickly run out of the energy of like, yeah, I feel like this guy's not into it, and I'm tired of putting the work in. Yeah, it's exhausting, and dating in the city especially because I feel like, I mean, I'm from the Midwest, and so you know, dating there is much different. You do it until you're 20, and then you get married and have six kids. Um, and so when I came here, it was like, woo, like I was in shock because you just get treated like you're disposable, you Mm -hmm. know? Like you can really think a million times, damn, that went well. I never personally thought that, but like people do. And then it's just like, no JK, you know? Yeah, the smell in New York that everyone complains about. It's like, oh, is it the trash? It's like, it's all its all of us just being disposed yeah, in the dating world. Of us. It's just failed relationships on the street. Yeah, so anyways, we're, we're going to like weddings next month. We're doing things. That's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I mean... I think I, I yeah I don't know we'll see how it goes I mean my first date w- in New York City was with a homeless man so it can really honestly only go I'm up. sorry pause <laughs> do you know this story I do not know this story oh please. like was this a guy who was just being a player and staying at d- several different women's apartments no no like p- that's you're being homeless. too optimistic um so he was couch surfing but definitely not with women um Damn. so i was seeing somebody when i moved to the city and we it was like not exclusive you know this just yeah think. Mm-hmm. um it was it was just you know a shit show uh because unavoidant men love them um and one night he made me so angry and i said you know what I didn't move to the city full of millions of men to put up with this. I'm going on a date. And I told him that. I was like, bye. And then I just opened the app and the last guy who had messaged me, I was like, hey, do you want to go out? And he's like, sure, I can meet you at this time at this bar. And I'm like, okay, dope. So I get to the bar. I'm waiting 10, 20, 35 minutes. And I'm 
I'm like, oh, I'm being stood up. Like, this is the first time. <laughs> and everyone else in the bar is like, oh, she's being stood up. You know, I'm mm -hmm. doing the, like, the door opens. And I'm like, is it? Nope. Okay, cool. Um, So he texts me. He's like, I'm running late. It's 30 minutes at this point. And I'm like, he's like, be there oh in five. Oh, my God, you're still were there. I'm still there because I'm pathetic. Um, And so... All of a sudden, I think, oh, th there's no way. I see this man roll up on a Razor scooter straight out of 1993, drenched in sweat, helmet and all. He proceeds to, like, collapse the scooter down and bring it into the bar. And I was like, I think you could just leave it. No one's going to take it. You know, it's like the thing's covered in rust, my dude. Like, you're good. Um, and so he walks oh. in immediately i don't care about height actually i'm not one of those people like yeah, I, it just super tall. i'm also not super tall i'm five six so mm -hmm. whatever um we advocate for short men on the pod <clears throat> you have what we advocate for short yeah, men on yeah, the pod. yeah 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 i love short men whatever um but it wasn't the fact that he was short it was that he lied like his profile was like 5 11 and he was like 5 5 um, oh, that's a bold that's a bold lie so the because short women will be like after a certain height i can't really tell how tall you are but right. that's like no no buddy. no i stood up and i was like uh, uh, you know i yeah. could kiss his forehead i could give him a little <laughs> yeah so he um, wasn't big enough for a real scooter <laughs> he wasn't big <laughs> enough for a rebel scooter <laughs> sponsor <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, so then immediately he's just telling me about like how much he hates his family, which is very weird. Like that's like that's a, a weird, weird way to start the conversation. Sorry, I'm late. My mom is terrible. Is a bitch. I have, I have trauma. <laughs> okay. Cool, right. cool, cool. I like my family personally, but sucks for you. So uh, we're going through the basic, like, oh, fucking kill me, dude. Like, the, oh, where do you live? What are, where are you from? Well, what does what it do say to the where you live part? Well, so that's how it all comes out. So he's asking me the question. So he goes, oh, you just moved to Park Slope from Michigan. Tell me about that. So I'm like, yada, yada. And I go, you live in Park Slope too, right? And he goes, well, kind of. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're going to have to elaborate because how do you kind of live somewhere? And he, well, he's like, well, technically I'm homeless. And I'm like, cool, 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 cool. Um, this is very not sex in the city of me right now to mm -hmm. be here with you. Um, and also, though, I'm from the Midwest, so I'm just, I don't mean to be like, mm -hmm, I'm nice, but I'm nice. And so I was like, there's tears to homelessness. This might not be that bad. So he was, he continued to explain that he's like couch surfing for a few months. So it wasn't like a new thing. Um, and I'm like, okay, whatever. So then I, just really want to get away from that part of the conversation. So I'm like, well, what do you do for work? And he's like, oh, it's sort of a funny story. Immediately not going to be Jesus. funny. If a man tells you that something's <laughs> a funny story, run. <laughs> Immediately no. What do you do for so, work? It's hilarious. So he, I, and, um, I have this quick internal dialogue like, okay, he probably moved to the city from Florida, got into finance, got addicted to cocaine, decided he needed an out. He wasn't happy with his life. He quit his job, and now he's pursuing his passion of music. That's not what happened. Um, he... Yeah, you are incredibly <laughs> optimistic. I was really trying to make my first date in New York work. He uh, worked at Ample Hills, the ice cream oh, place. Oh, the ice cream place, yeah. And I guess he like walked in the day before our date. He walked in, and he... They had scheduled him four days in a row. And he was like, fuck this. And he quit on the spot. <laughs> and I was like, Ben. <laughs> fuck training. Ben, honey, not fuck to mother training. you. I know you have mommy issues. Um, but you should be working full time. You're you're homeless, you yeah. know? And so the whole day was just a nightmare. He goes to the bathroom. The bartender walks over and just gives me a shot. You know me. I don't even drink. I was like, this could be bleach and I'm taking it. Um, and so when he came back, I was like, mm, I have a comedy show I just got invited to do. Like, I have to leave. But what no one preps you for when you move to the city and date is that there's a possibility that when you leave the bar, you're going in the same direction. Uh -huh. So then homie is and you don't know this well scooting to next to me for a quarter of a mile. <laughs> Finally, I'm just like, I'm taking the long route. I'm like, I got to go this way. Like, I got to get out of this situation. So yeah, so, yeah. And then uh, that was it. I mean, that wasn't it. He texted me multiple times after that. And I was just like, there's no way that you thought this went well. Yeah. There's no way. That's weirdly the time they always text though. 
always like, like he was so like, no let me win it back he like, was no, so no. confident i'm like you told me about your mommy issues you told me about your daddy issues your couch surfing how your dog doesn't have food how you quit your <laughs> job but you lied about your fucking height yeah like what that is weird that's a weird move <laughs> that's what you chose to lie to me about so they're yeah. like women love honesty except after how that tall i was are. like well at least it can only go uphill yeah. you know damn that's and it girl. mostly has except i did go on a date with a guy who did a line of coke before and the date was to one of the dumpling spots in Chinatown where you get like 20 dumplings for a dollar <laughs> and I was like <laughs> and I was vegetarian at the time and they were all pork and so I just watched this man inhale dumplings and then be like I'm gonna go grocery shopping do you want to go I was like I think I'm good that's crazy I took a half day off work for that one and then I like I walked back into work and they were like we're not gonna ask and I was like probably better yeah you're like mm, yeah that's, yeah no <laughs> it's like really bad so this guy this guy po- pulled out some gustav klimt and i was like yeah i don't even know that what that is he's an artist i know it's art i know it's art i'm not that dumb i, I know like, it's God art i know damn. you went to a museum of some kind i know what exhibit means but i just i don't know the artist okay okay, okay not okay. usually my line of work if you right? saw maybe you would i wouldn't i wouldn't i'll tell you right now i wouldn't i saw your instagram story i was like uh, i don't know what this yeah, is yeah yeah uh no fucking clue but uh can i say i kind of love that you were being pessimistic going to the party and still ended up like meeting someone. Oh, I was so pessimistic. Also, if you're looking to date or meet people, fuck the apps, go to a mixer. Because I that's like the closest thing to an organic like meeting, mm-hmm. you know, that you can get. Um, so I left and oh God, he's gonna listen to this. It's fine. I left and I was like, I have a roster. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have 11 <laughs> firefighters on my fucking team. And then yeah. I had to go and be like, okay, well, this guy was like a fuck boy. This guy was kind of, the conversation was boring. Mm-hmm. Like, and I didn't really have to do that because like, so how I knew that I liked him above everyone else was because I was kind of roasting him and he gave it back to me. And I was like, that's the one, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's the one. And so, um, and we were all talking in the group and it was yeah, just fun. The whole it was like, this yeah, guy's the fun. group was like vibing. They yeah. invited us to the Halloween party. He was like, let's do a group costume. And I was just like, well, this yeah. is a vibe. Yeah. So that's a relationship man right there. So yeah. Let's do a group costume. Yeah. But it's just so much of the advice is always like, you, you, uh, oh God. Like, you need to love yourself before someone else loves you. I don't you fucking and... love myself. Let's be fair. I had a <laughs> mental meltdown about about being on camera today. You know what oh, I'm really? saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, we have insecurities. Like, I've been in therapy for three years. I've still, I'm working on shit. But I don't think you have to, like, love yourself perfectly or have your life together to be ready for someone i think that's no. a bullshit attitude like if anything i'm like all the people i know that are depressed and sad are the ones always with somebody yeah so i'm like i don't, well, I don't, I don't know buy that i don't know if that's the, the route to go either though you know <laughs> there's I mean? like a balance you know like you're never gonna find someone who's just like i love every aspect of my life all the time and if you do that's not nah, that's scary you know or the bullshit that's just about like your energy yeah. Oh, your energy needs to be open and like, ooh, you know, like what? Oh, my I, that's the bullshit I always get from people. They're like, your energy, and I've and no one has ever told me that that was someone that I wanted to fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No <laughs> one that I've ever wanted to fuck was like, oh, you know, your energy, <laughs> you know, just yeah. feels like you don't want anybody. It's like okay, I don't want you. Let that's me what the let me heal is. my pussy chakra real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> You're mad I'm not flirting with you, and it's like because th- there's a reason for that. Yeah, that's my energy is correct. Yeah, I don't I don't want you. You're reading that correctly, and yes. then they're like, well, this is the energy you're giving to men, honey. <laughs> no one's gonna talk to you. I was like, exactly. Actually, I don't want to talk to you. This that's guy's friend point. said that to me uh, at the at the mixer. He was oh, like, really? he was like, you don't really seem like you're here to meet anyone. And I was like, ding ding ding, <laughs> you are correct. I love pissing away thirty five dollars on a Thursday. <laughs> like, no, but that's what I'm saying. I like it. It's like you know, there's so many bullshit sayings. Like it'll happen when you're not looking m- for it. My favorite is like. like Whatever. the person who's been with their partner for 10 years and they're like yes exactly like you just don't i have a friend who said this like you just have to stop looking and i was like i literally don't leave my apartment i don't know how much less i can stop yeah, looking like i'm like are yeah. you I, like i'm off the apps i'm just like in therapy twice a week like how much more how much more do i have to stop looking it's been three years like yeah. i my eyes have been closed the whole fucking time you know no, I feel that. and it's just i that's it's bullshit there's no timing it's just a matter of like happenstance and it's all bullshit yeah it's something too of it's like i don't know i'm at the point i'm like if you're gonna come and disrupt my peace you better you gotta come in hard and fast and heavy 
and yeah. be all about it. And I'm just like, that's it. Well, so my change thing is, my mind, make me less yeah, pessimistic. Yeah, yeah. Or my whatever. thing is like, I've been alone for so long, and I have. Uh, okay, this is where I get to talk about myself. I have <laughs> a badass career. I have a cute dog, a apartment in a beautiful building. I have incredible friends. There's nothing like if I want something, I buy it. Like there's nothing that I can't give to myself. So what are you going to bring to the table? What makes you special? You have to enhance my life in some way, even if that's just the connection that we have. You right. know what I'm saying? Like the conversation that we have, it doesn't have to be something like huge, but I, my life is good. I'm not in no way looking for someone to like fix it yeah. um, or like bring me happiness. I have happiness. So it's like, you better do something. You better <laughs> do something, you know, because I'm not just going to jump at the first opportunity to be in a relationship with someone. Yeah, but sometimes isn't that more frustrating that you're almost just like, really, I just want the most basic thing that just like be a good time to be around. And when you still feel like you're having you trouble finding find that, it. it's very frustrating. Yeah. Because that's the beauty of like uh, if you financially have money, and mm -hmm. I know many women that do very well, and they're like, I really don't care if that guy makes a lot of money. And I'm like, yeah. oh, you're even opening the door to broke dudes and yeah. they still can't yeah, and walk still in can't. and figure it out? I was fucking a guy that made $13,000 a year. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> and you're just like, honestly, like you're a piece of shit too. Uh, <laughs> like you would think you'd be on your best behavior, but you're just eating all of my groceries. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking disappointing. Comics, and that's on male comics. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> nah, um, but that those fuck your self esteem more because then when they don't want you, you're like, you don't want me. Yeah, you? you're yeah. a loser. Thankfully, a little bit. I haven't up until this point. I haven't really cared enough about a man to my self esteem is just like rock solid. Like, oh, there you go. You know, I have, I have my own issues, but it has nothing to do with a man value. Like a, a man like being like, Meh. you mm -hmm. know, I don't give a fuck. Um, but yeah, so it, it is hard though. It's like, it gets disheartening. It gets exhausting. Yada, yada. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Um, we'll do a follow-up episode when I get my heart <laughs> broken. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you come back. We're like, well, we're going to hold you to everything you said. Huh? Our wedding is going to be a live episode of Shooters. I mean, but you had that feeling a little bit that I've heard other people talk about because I have not had this feeling of, um... Essentially, when you meet someone, they really are doing all the right things and like showing up and putting in the effort. A little part of you just goes, "Oh fuck," and it like yeah. makes you kind of nervous. You're like, "Oh wait, so is this, this man... the this is the thing? Yeah, it's happening now." Yeah, it's fucking horrifying to think that so many people go on their last first date without knowing it. Like they go on a first date and then they marry that person. It makes me nauseated. So this, which is crazy, but also at the same time, every time there's a breakup, something that helps me get over it is like, okay, well, every relationship either ends or you're going to marry that person. Yeah. So when you sit there, you go, okay, I didn't think I was going to marry him. And it's like, okay. So ultimately, this was going to come. It's gotta it end. just came yeah. at a time you it's didn't a matter want of when. it to. Or it came and it wasn't on your terms. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. You're like, but I was still having fun with it. It's like, ah, eh, well. Yeah. Sorry. This, this man invited me. Actually, our first day was supposed to be a Mets game. And I, I want to preface by saying I had a lot going on that day. So that was the true like reason I didn't go. But I also Stop did. Stop clarifying things like he's going to listen. Come he's he's going to listen. Um, So I did um immediately email my therapist, subject line, am I avoidant? <laughs> and it was just like, these are the reasons I don't think I'm going to go. Is this reasonable? Am I being avoidant? And then I think I signed off something like, anyways, thanks for listening. I'll be questioning my entire life the next week. See you Monday. So my phone rang like five minutes later. Poor my therapist, first of all, I pay her mortgage. She like earns <laughs> her fucking overtime. She calls. She's like, hey, girly. I'm like, hi. Okay. <laughs> um, But she made a good point. So, yeah, especially getting back into dating after so long and dating such shitty people, which we'll, we will, you know, segue into. Um, It's very difficult. I have my own emotional unavailabilities, mm. and so it's very difficult for me to not, like, project those on relationships. Um, and so I have to be very mindful of, like, am I being avoidant in this situation? Um, and 90% of the time I am. So, But I, I told her, I said, I don't think I'm being avoidant. And she said, well, there's one way to test it. If you really actively don't want to be avoidant, 
text him, tell him, hey, I can't go tonight for reasons A, B, C, and D. And then too many say- <laughs> Too many reasons. Too many. Just one. Um, But then say, follow up and say, however, I'd love to- do something Wednesday like book it immediately you don't wait yeah Be- and and she's like and if you have like if you're reluctant to do that you're being avoidant and I was like fuck I'm being avoidant because <laughs> I was immediately like uh well this Wednesday uh and then I was just like fuck it I'm gonna do it so we did we went out like that following week we put something in the books and then I was like oh that was silly of you you should have like you know you should have done this sooner <laughs> So this anyways. is always, I mean, this always blows my mind because it's like I've taken every fucking relationship test, read the books, yeah. especially the attachment theory. I've like written the books at this point. Yeah, I'm but, like in school for this shit, and I still can't figure it but out. I've, I've never had avoidant tendencies. I got yeah. secure on that test. I've taken it a few times. Yeah, and it's always, and the only thing I hate about that test, they'll be like, secure people are often the ones in relationships, and, and you're I'm like, bitch, where, where, where? <laughs> I'm secure. Where is it? Or it's almost like, oh, that's why I'm not in them. It's like, oh, because you don't fuck with the people that aren't secure people. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like all the other ones are taken. Well, it's a lot of pressure for someone with a secure attachment style if you're with someone who's anxious or anxious avoidant. Um, That's a lot of pressure on you because you're constantly like validating that person. And then also- For anxious, not avoidant. uh, For anxious, you're validating, correct? For for avoidant- you're more so like I think that people t- tend to like secure people tend to overcompensate. So the thing about attachment styles is like they're fluid, right? So yeah. you I've you gone, did someone avoid I've it gone makes you anxious. all of them. Yeah. Um. But yeah, exactly. So so people in relationships can bring out certain like attachment styles out of you, or you can like start to kind of adopt theirs, um, which is very interesting. And that's another thing that's come up is, um, I've realized that. I've been the problem in a lot of my relationships. Like, my exes all suck, don't get me wrong. But I've also, because of their behavior, I've also had my fair share of being toxic um, because they, like, brought out this, like, anxious side of me. um, But this is true for most people. This is the playing the games thing that everybody, as they get older, just goes... Yeah, this is what I learned. Yeah. If you play games, you're just going to get people that play games. Yeah. When people play games with you, you play them back. That's, quote, being toxic. It's like it just prolongs the game. Yeah. No one wants to play a game with someone who's not participating. Yeah. And that's real life sports, whatever. Yeah. That's it's just what yeah. it is. And that's and funny. My dad told me that when I was young. He was like, it's a game, Erica. You got to play the game. Well. And I was like, I don't, though. <laughs> I'm not like I'm a direct fucking. Yeah. Right, I like, like you. I All right. Let's do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's like, what? It's over? I'm like. I don't know, you you came to me. What do you yeah. want? Yeah, no, it's it's really hard, and we're taught this from like a young age, right? Like, oh, he punched you in the face. He likes you. <laughs> 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 we love domestic violence. Yeah, I've done. Um, I've made plenty of moves, but I wouldn't say I was being like manipulative, <laughs> toxic. But they were just moves to be like, let me put myself in this scenario oh, no. to be like near this person around, like to try to like get something to happen. No, but no. I wasn't doing like crazy manipulative. I've stuff. been insane, and this is the first time I'll ever, first and only time I'll ever admit it but like <laughs> i've done some crazy shit like what's a crazy shit thing you did um when my ex-fiance wanted this like limited edition teddy bear that he gave me which first of all ew um it was very expensive i will say he wanted it back and he was using it as a reason to just like contact me mm. and so he lived um in a different state so I, I mailed it back to him, but I mailed it to him one limb at a time. So, like, first he got an arm, <laughs> then he got a leg, then he got the body. <laughs> and it was, like, a $300 teddy bear. Um, I mean, I was also 18 and engaged. So, you know, I feel like it's fine. It's been a decade. <laughs> this is, I can talk about it now. This is I the craziest admit. thing I've ever heard. However, since I know the gist of the story with the engagement man, uh, I say it is justified. But uh, that is wow. Yeah, yeah. That's I some mean, serial killer shit. <laughs> oh, you want your toy? This I'm is, this is actually it, now a limb. true crime podcast. Um, I thought you were just gonna say I like destroyed it and mailed the whole thing. But the fact that you did several no, packages. No, I paid for shipping multiple times. <laughs> I was like, take my fucking money. Let's go. We're making a point. Um, so also after we called our engagement off. Um, which the whole situation's like all it's very yeah, weird. Yeah, do you want to tell that story now? I feel like 
Okay, you I'm going to keep it really short. I didn't short. know you were 18. I knew you were young, not 18 I, young. Yeah, I, I'll try to keep it as short as possible. So basically, I was hella Christian. <laughs> um, <laughs> religious trauma. Um, I was very Christian. I went to this like music festival in the middle of a cornfield in Illinois. And as I'm, you do. Yeah, as you do. As and, all the Christian groups do. <laughs> as we all do. And uh, I met this man, and I was 17 at the time. I was going into my senior year in high school, and was he, he was 25. Um, so, all right, all right. Um, yeah, because there were eight years between us. Um, oof. when you say so, eight, yeah, that makes eh, you feel yeah. a lot worse. Um, and so whatever, we hit it off. We decided we were gonna date. We were gonna do long distance. Um, and basically, we did that. We did that for my senior year of high school. I didn't go to my prom because I went to his friend's wedding instead. Like, it was, I like honestly missed out on like my senior year of high school because I was so wrapped up with being with this, you know, adult ass man. Mm. So, um, we got engaged on my spring break. Um, and we were like going to like we were talking about eloping and we were going to elope because my family did not approve. I, I wonder why. I mean, of course. <laughs> um, when he first met my mom, he tried to give her silver and like I think what? I think he was like trying to trade me for silver. <laughs> I never what really I never really fully understood. This is literally some like my, old country <laughs> like my mom was like no. <laughs> oh what my the god. Fuck? So, um so we were going to elope. The courthouse had caught on fire. So we couldn't elope, which was like a sign. Um this was also the same weekend that he was like I was telling him I had been, I was stressed about applying to colleges and he's like, "Well, you're not going to go to college. Like you're just going to have babies and like I'll what? provide for you and like you'll just be my wife." And I was like this doesn't feel something in my body saying no. <laughs> like yeah, also, we're like in a Whole Foods. A I've never felt the same going into a Whole Foods since then. Oh, he did nothing for a living. He was like a. He just traded silver. He just traded, he just traded fucking traded. silver. He just stole aluminum yeah, parts from cars. Yeah, just trying to trade like, it for some Yeah, cash. he had like studied theology or something. What so, the hell? so um, we had this like our engagement was like kind of like secret, and we were like, well, we're gonna like get engaged at the end of the summer because we he he was like part of this nonprofit, and we were going on tour to basically raise money for it, and um. On the second night, second or third night of tour, one of his friends who I had become good friends with told me that he like had walked in. So basically he had told me like this mutual friend of ours that was originally my ex's friend first told me like, hey, I don't know how to bring this up, but I walked in on him and this other girl and the girl was in our friend group. The girl was on tour with us Mm. and I had raised multiple flags like I don't feel comfortable with her behavior she's clearly in love with you everyone thought I was crazy and then I find out that like our friend had walked in on them and so obviously we had a little talk and I was like this is done we're done um the same thing Wait, which side note he was sleeping with her so I never got like the full details but Yes, I, I'm like. But were you two sleeping together? Because the whole religious. No, thing. we absolutely were not. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Okay. So. And this is this just feeds into his old crazy old school theology where he was like, "Oh, I'll marry the virgin girl, but yeah. this girl for now." Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it became like the it was the whole situation. If I give too many details, people will be able to identify it. I really, Good. I'm really thinking like that. Like everyone's gonna listen to this. I know, but basically, I called it off. The same thing would have been like, "I'm going home to my mom and dad," but I was like, "Nah, I didn't fuck up. I'm gonna stay on tour." So then we all spent like two months together. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> In a van, <laughs> traveling across the country, Holy and I was shit. like, "This is fine." And, um, and then I came back home, and you know, he the whole time he was like you know, jealous if I was talking to guys in bands. Like, it was just, we were both being toxic about it, you yeah. know? Well, so, I mean, you're fucking 18. I was 18. I don't Like, he should to. have known better, you know? Um, But I, like, I feel like I get a little bit of a pass. And then I came home, and he wanted the teddy bear, and it was a whole thing. So I was like, okay, there you go. Damn. Well, I didn't. Um, Actually, I did hear from him after that because I found out that 
the girl had left his best friend and he and the girl got together for a while. She lied about having ovarian cancer to get money from his family. Jesus. She's now married. He's now married and has a kid. And I, up until recently, have been very alone. So make it make fucking sense. Make it make sense. Funny, funny. Um, I, I, it doesn't sound like these people are truly happy with what they're doing. No, no. I all of it was like it. a cult. Like I, I look back yeah, sounds like or it. I read old journals and I'm like, oh, girly, you were brainwashed. I mean, like, you're also so young. Yeah, I was just very impressionable. So young. It's the that first was... person you like that likes you. Fucking yeah, I hated shit, men. Like... like I really like all of my friends. It was a running joke. Like guys would like come into our church and they'd be like, "Oh, what's her deal?" And they'd be like, "Don't fucking bother," because I was just like, "I'm a good student. I'm in band. I'm in sports. Like I don't have time for this." You know yeah. what I'm saying? Interesting. Um, and then I like met this older dude and was just like, "Fuck up my life. Mm, okay. <laughs> Give my mom some silver. Uh... <laughs> At least we got something out of it." You right. know. <laughs> Uh, um, but right. yeah. So I got to ask you, because you are currently in grad school for psychology. Yeah, I'm studying so, uh, to be a therapist. Yes. I was going to say, so you ultimately want to become a therapist Correct. one day. Yeah. Uh, career pivot. Hello. But uh, which all for it. Uh, so obviously we've talked and we're friends of I have tried therapy and I'm still someone that doesn't get it. Yeah. Per se. So I would like to ask you, <laughs> uh, based on obviously your schooling and just personal experience of uh, feeling like you've had success in therapy, yeah. what do you feel like makes a good therapist for someone that maybe feels like me where they're like, I don't get it, I've tried it, and tr I've tried people several times. So there's a lot of different approaches to therapy. Um, there's different styles. So um, some like your problem finding a therapist may have to do with their style. Like maybe CBT isn't for you, cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, so I think I've never that, done that one actually. But, so okay. I think that the first step is like researching styles and figuring out which approach seems like it would be most effective for you. Um, also, therapists are a lot like dating. The I fucking hate when everyone says this. <laughs> I, I know. Hate when I'm sorry, says but it's this. the truth. I mean, I because this is the real truth for me is how do I know it's a good one? I thought the last one I had was good. Can it I, was I recommended have a list. by a therapist? I'm going to pull up my phone. I have a list of green flags and red flags. So therapist green flags. Okay. They listen if they don't fucking listen. <laughs> I mean, but you'd be surprised. No, I've had therapists who like speak over to me or they who I can tell you interview. So you know what it's like to actively listen where I can tell that they're not actively listening. They're just thinking of like the next thing that they want to say. Okay. So find somebody who listens, who makes you feel validated, who challenges you, but is respectful about it. Um, someone who's open to feedback. I had a therapist who was giving me a certain type of homework once and I had to just tell her like hey I fucking hate this and I don't want to keep doing it it's not working for me and she was very receptive to that but I also have heard for, like stories in school and stories from friends where their therapist is just like well that's my approach you know mm. and so they have to be open to feedback um they don't rush your treatment they're mindful of your identity they don't try to be your friend this is the most important one the treatment feels evidence-based so you should not be going into therapy um, just talking, like yeah. talking to a brick wall and getting the occasional like stereotypical. And how does that make you feel mm -hmm. like that? This should be an evident. There should be an evidence based treatment plan. Um, they do not judge. They encourage your independence and competence. Some quick red flags. If they try to flirt with your befriend, you, your therapist should not be your Instagram friend. So if they are, that's problematic. Um, assuming they're always right, refusing to acknowledge feedback, pushing you to talk about things that you're not ready to talk about. Um, These are last flags. Yeah, last yeah. minute cancellations, judging or dismissing your experiences. I had a therapist once, um, basically repeatedly session after session after session this was my last therapist tell me that I needed to cut off someone in my life who's very important to me mm. and it was like I, I I had gotten to the point where I was just like I'm not doing that so we need yeah. to figure out an alternative and she wouldn't let it go so I fired her yeah I was like okay we're done this I've isn't had, working for me I've had friends say that about um when they've had like family problems yeah, or that, things with yeah their parents. that's what it was. And they're like, yeah, I go to therapy and they're like, oh, well, you don't have to, you know, go home for Thanksgiving. And they're like, well, no, I kind of do. Yeah. Like, they that, are still my family. And yes. I'm not saying I can easily just cut them out of my life or I don't want to. It's like, yeah. I'm here to figure out how to deal with them or what should I say to them to get them to stop doing X, Y, Z. Yeah. Not just 
cut it off. Like I had my my good therapist back in Michigan. She had similar issues with her um, or a, a similar experience with her parents that I had. But she had completely cut ties like with all of her family. Yeah. And I obviously wasn't going to do that. But she was capable of setting her own experience aside and helping me navigate mine. Right. Um, so I think, I mean, my, my therapist gives me like action items every single week. She challenges like homework me. homework to do? No, not homework. Just like things to practice, things to consider. I have OCD, which is like so fun in relationships <laughs> because <laughs> I overthink everything. I like really ruminate on things like to a very, very, um, I, I just obsessive degree, you yeah. know? Um, and so... She, there were certain things that I was doing, like compulsions, that she challenged me. And I've since worked out of post pandemic, I couldn't go to a Target without having a m- mental meltdown. <laughs> like, oh, literally, I would have because I had so many like health anxieties and general anxieties. And I'd been cooped up in my apartment that I would go into Target and like disassociate to the point of feeling like I was going to like pass out. And so we had to like work through all of these things. She would give me like steps every week to take. And now <laughs> Target gets my money every week. <laughs> okay. And now but- I'm back to buying throw pillows <laughs> right but then this is the thing that's frustrating to someone like me it's like i don't have a specific thing like that that's I don't okay go you into, don't have but to. i don't go into therapy and go oh i need this and i need help with this which i almost sometimes feel like it makes it harder for me to find a therapist that i feel like really helps me yeah because it's very situational and and yeah. it's not like you can find someone who like specializes in ocd who specializes in ex- anxiety so maybe you find someone who's just like has more general experience who kind of know, who kind of has experience in all of those things relationship dynamics mm-hmm anxiety depression self-esteem yeah career like the, and they exist you know the more generalized like practices do exist i know but i, I don't know it feels a little more difficult or i told you when i dumped mine mid-session yeah <laughs> <laughs> and she asked her feedback i was just like i i've never left here and thought about anything you've said yeah i'm like you really don't say much i was yeah. like and i walked in saying i want feedback and challenge me and make me look at things differently but you have it yeah, it, it's hard. I will tell you in this city, I went through f- five, I think, therapists before I found my current one, which I, I'm hoping she can get you in next month. Oh, <laughs> because I mean, honestly, I like, like it. it's, it, she's just such a game changer. And I, um, I feel Mel- like everybody says this about their no, therapist I know, when but they like, love therapy. You know, you know Melissa. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She had the same experience where she had gone through a bunch of therapists and was like paying an ass load of money. And she was like, N- I'm getting nothing out of this. Like, what the hell am I? I doing wrong like yeah. why can't i find someone she started with ashley and she's like i get the therapy thing now <laughs> i get the therapy thing right. and that's the thing too is like I, I guess that's a reason i'm like so passionate about going into the field is because i hope to be a therapist like that where someone comes to me and they're just like yeah like i i can breathe mm-hmm. like i actually got what i needed out of that session um and also like i'm so fucked up like i've been like the engagement thing is like <laughs> tip of the iceberg like i've been through so much that i feel like that is what is going to make me a good therapist because i i know what it's like to have ocd i know what it's like to be cheated on i know what it's like to have a bicycle thrown at your head like like i know what it's like to experience these traumatic things and to have to like navigate those and unpack childhood trauma and um you know, while learning to still remain unbiased in these types of like types of encounters, like I think that that's what's going to make me a good therapist. Like it's hard if you're talking to someone about relationships who's been married for 30 years and out of the dating game, Yeah, <laughs> like who's never been on an app like that's not going to work. They're not going right. to be relevant to you. And so it does like finding that that like yeah, my girl was around my age. She was married now. But yeah, you know, yeah. Everyone just has, as much as we're trained to be unbiased and, you know, to just, like, use this scientifically evidence-based approach, like, you know, we all have these, like, complexities and layers that I think no matter what do come out in one way or another. And just, like, again, just, like, dating, sometimes it just doesn't click, you know? Sometimes you're just like, I really would want this to work, but there's just something that's not there. Yeah, during the session, I was like, what am I doing? This is a waste of time. My rule of thumb is, like, you give them typically three to four sessions. And if you don't feel, like, you know, a connection or, like, you're getting something, 
it's time like move, it's fair to move on yeah all i got was at the end it was always be like do some self-care this week i was like oh thanks <laughs> fucking, fucking meme account what is this <laughs> or even she told me a stat once i was like i could look up stats bitch. you're like i don't need like, to know where's the insight that 60 percent of people are as miserable as me like, yeah yeah no something like well no. people find it more stressful going to doctors and not having a diagnosis than actually getting diagnosed with something like cancer yeah. and i was like yeah makes yeah. fucking sense yeah. I, don't, I don't need that stat. That does I know that. not help me. I'm going through that. Yeah. Fucking, yeah. It's annoying. We're going to find you a good one. I'm, I'm convinced. That's what everybody fucking says. <laughs> everybody brags about their fucking therapist. I'm making it my and, life uh, mission. <laughs> people were shocked. Is that bad that I said that for feedback? No. I literally was like, you know, everybody's always like, my therapist says, my therapist said, my therapist. And I go, I've never fucking quoted you. <laughs> you've given me nothing i paid you hundreds of dollars literally all i want was one quote for the podcast nothing has ever stuck with me and just be like well she has no boundaries i'm like yeah i fucking know that's why i'm complaining about her here yeah like what no what, what am i supposed to do with that you need someone who says Ugh. yeah it seems like there's a lack of boundaries let's unpack how you can react no she never that. pushed me like, on anything yeah no 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 she's not it yeah or once she Thank just you was next. like you do have a lot of dating trauma <laughs> 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 okay <laughs> you don't fucking Thanks. say <laughs> i think if someone said that to me that'd be my 13th reason <laughs> i just like no <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny she was just like you know you talk about it like it's just you know dating sucks i'm like well it does suck and most people i know have been through the same or worse than yeah. me so i'm like yeah just look at it like well, shit happens. Yeah. She's like, no, it's some real trauma. I'm like, all right, thanks, Doc. Fucking <laughs> great. What, now I can walk these streets at least knowing yeah, that I have like, trauma. Hey, you've had some dating trauma? Well, do some self-care this week. Get a face mask. I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you so much for your help. Uh, uh, yeah. Went to a lot of school for that. Uh, we do have to ramp up. Yeah. But um, Wow, time fucking flies when you're shit-talking your ex-fiance. Yeah. <laughs> and the homeless guy. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, uh, dude, thank like, you. Do you want people to follow you? Yeah, that's fine. Do you want to plug your socials? Where My you Instagram is annoying. It's at seeker and sought. Yes, I used to be on Tumblr. If it's not clear, that yeah, I was a, a Tumblr riddle. girl. <laughs> it's a riddle vibe. Um, you can add me. I also have um, a podcast that I'm relaunching this December, hopefully, um, and a psych page and all of that is like tagged in my bio. So yeah, let's Seeker be let's be sought. friends and shit talk, man. And but not sought. the firefighter. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Uh, and you can find us at Shooters Got to Shoot Pod, and I'm at Sparica with two A's. And stay tuned for Patreon preview coming up next. Thank you guys for listening and watching. See you next week. Bye. Bye. And I'm like, yeah, fuck that. I'm not going to this date. If I hear from this dude, if I don't hear from this dude in like 20 minutes, fuck that. I don't hear from it at all, as expected. Uh, so no date. I don't care. Then I get a text from my homegirl, Christiana Jackson, who was just on the show and literally uh, was doing the episode of, you know, teach me how to hoe, essentially. Right. Which great episode. If you haven't listened to very fun, hilarious. So all of a sudden I get a text from her. Talk about timing on this. Literally three o'clock. Either of you hot bitches want to randomly chill with some Argentinian men tonight? And I just go, yeah, I might be down. What's the plan? I was like, fuck it. The apps ain't working for me. You got an Argentinian dude who's got a brother? Okay, I'll go. She's like, I'm free after nine. It's some dude and his brother. One's 33 and the other one is 30. They want to grab drinks. And my friend Stephanie laughs. She goes, haha, I'll let Erica have first steps. But also it's like, yeah, girl, you're like in love with a fireman. So whatever. And I said, I could go. Why the hell not? And then we figure out a place to go, da da da. Then we're out with the boys. We get a text from Stephanie, like 11 p.m. She's like, I need an update ASAP. I said, We're still out having a nice time. She's like, Oh, I love that. Are they hot? I said, Very cute. If you want to hear the rest of this episode, join our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash shooters gotta shoot. For just five bucks a month, you can get an extra episode a week of all the behind the scenes content. And we'll answer all your questions directly over there. You get the real juice, you get the real scoop, and you get a say. In who we have on the show and what we talk about on the show, patreon.com slash shooters gotta shoot.